Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the story behind the photograph. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about this photo that you see over my shoulder here. This is a Northern Lights photo, more specifically a Steve photo that I took May 27, 2017 in Ogden Valley, Utah. So, which is a pretty rare occurrence uh, to see the Northern Lights so far south. And even more rare to see a Steve phenomena this far south. The story started actually the night before. I was up in Logan, Utah, leading a uh, photography night photography workshop with the Cache Valley Photographers Group up there. And we were up at a place called Porcupine Reservoir. And we were up there shooting around the actually the the clouds were really kind of skunking us that night probably for the first two hours of the night from I don't know maybe 9 30 10 o'clock till about midnight it was cloudy and just the clouds would not break and so we were not having the best of luck and then um, we we left one location and we were trying and we came down to check out another spot and as we did that the clouds started clearing up and then eventually the the night cleared we were let me cut in here I've got allergies right now I'm dying so I'm gonna be sniffling a lot and I'm gonna try to cut those sniffles out as much as I can but if I don't I apologize in advance but hold on I gotta sneeze Whew, that felt better all right so sorry about that we um, moved down to uh, a spot there right to, on the edge of the lake and or the reservoir there and I had gotten out of the car first and I went down this hill and I went to set up my tripod and camera right on the edge of the lake and I had my uh, Sony a7 with a Rokinon 14 millimeter lens on it because I wanted to get a really nice wide shot of the lake and the Milky Way and, and with some reflection so I set my tripod up and um, I put my camera on on there, tightened it down, uh, set it down, and I was getting my composition, and I realized that I was the tripod was too high, so I was going to lower the legs down. So I picked up one of the legs and cranked it to, uh, to to loosen it. And when I did that, my camera fell off the tripod because I didn't tighten it down all the way like I thought, and it went boop, right into the water. And I watched the screen. LCD screen on the back of my camera go black underwater and I hurry I is without even thinking I jumped in grabbed my camera out of the water shook it off took the battery out took the SD card out made sure nothing was in that compartment and uh, took the lens off made sure there got there was no water that got into the sensor area I was pretty fortunate that it uh, didn't get any water inside of that area maybe just a little a few drops here and there the lens did get some water in it so it was kind of uh, a little bit wet, but I actually was able to end up uh, recovering the camera. Um, not that night, but uh, over the next couple of days, I used uh, rice, like the old trick of putting, putting electronics in rice to salvage it. That did the trick, and uh, I was able to use the camera and the lens uh, after that. In fact, I sold them maybe uh, six or about a year later, actually. I was fortunate to have a second body that I could still shoot on. So I grabbed my Sony a6000 and then I had a Rokinon 24mm f1.4 lens, which is an awesome lens for shooting night photography. But with a, a Sony body, it's a, it's a crop sensor, so I'm getting essentially a 36mm uh, field of view. Which isn't the best for, for night photography because you typically you want wide, but it, it, it does great for if you want to do panels. So I ended up doing a very large pano uh, that night with that lens because I wanted to get a, a, a pano. So I think I ended up with 48 or 50 photos, like four rows of, or f yeah, four rows of 12. Yeah, that's 48, right? I'll show that picture here that I got. So that was at the, at the lake before, or the night before. The main group left after a couple hours and everybody went home. They were all from Logan, so they were able to just go home. I ended up staying around for a little bit longer and then I went to a park and ride in Logan, slept for a couple hours, woke up in the morning and drove home. So that was a, that was a Friday night, Saturday morning. So Saturday we had got invited to a 
end of year barbecue with uh, with the neighbors and all the kids and stuff. So we were over at a neighbor's house, and we're getting wrapped up, getting everybody's getting ready to go home, and I got a message or a notification on my phone on Facebook that uh, a photographer friend of mine, Brian Carter, tagged me in a post and said, hey, the uh, Northern Lights, are, it looks like it's going to go off tonight. Anybody going out anywhere? So I saw that, looked at the reports, and it was going to be a great, great solar storm, which means the Northern Lights is going to go off. I uh, told a couple people that were at the party, I said, hey, I'm going to run up to Pineview and see if I can catch the Northern Lights on my camera. If you want to come, you can, and see if you can see them with your eyes. You know, it'd be kind of cool. And so he's like, yeah, let's do it. I'll get my, my family. And he invited his parents. His dad was big into astronomy, so he wanted to come up too. I went home, and Aaron had gone home before me. And I told her, I said, hey, the Northern Lights is going off. Get the kids in the car. We're going. I'm grabbing my camera bag. We're going. And she was like, absolutely, let's do it. And usually Aaron's not the type of person that is up for going in, out and doing night shoots with me at all. But a year before, if you remember episode 6, the Bifrost over the Tetons, the day after I got home from that trip, actually the night that I got home from that trip, it was a Sunday night, the northern lights, again a solar storm was going off and the northern lights just blew up that night. And there was I had several friends that went out over to Pineview or Snow Basin up in the Ogden Valley, even as far down as uh, uh, Salt Lake up by Park City, Heber City, they were getting um, northern light pictures. And so I made her kind of feel bad for not letting me go out that night to get uh, to get the picture. So when this came around this time, she was like, absolutely, I'm not going to, I don't want to hear you complain for the next year. So we uh, loaded the kids up in the car. We drove up to the same spot that I actually did the shooting star, the, the person meter showers, where I slept with the skunk. That's episode f seven, I think, one, two before this. Uh, we went to that spot. We just parked there on the side of the road, pulled out, my, uh, pulled out my tripod, and we got there a little, just a little after sunset. So we still had a little bit of time before the before the uh, stars came out and it got dark enough for anything. So we were, we were set up, I had my camera set up, we were, we were talking with, uh, you know, with my neighbor and my kids actually fell asleep on the, on the car ride up and they were, they were out, they didn't wake up, they didn't even get out to look or anything. But, so we were, we were set up and it started getting darker and a little bit darker and we could see on the horizon just this kind of wispy cloud and I thought, that, that's an interesting cloud. I've never seen one, you know, quite like that, where it's just kind of wispy and it was kind of moving fast. You know, not fast, but it was just kind of moving. And I thought, that's, that's weird. So I took a test photo with my, with my camera and it pulled in colors. And I was going, whoa, that's not a cloud. That's, you know, the sun had set. There's no colors in the sky. And this was pulling a color. And so I thought, that's got to be the northern lights. So I checked the app, and sure, uh, sure enough, or I checked a website that showed the, uh, the magnitude of the Northern Lights, and sure enough, it was, it was getting, getting stronger. So I started taking some more shots, and five or ten minutes later, the, the sky had gotten really dark, and then we could see this. We could see this, this, uh, this clouded figure, the Northern Lights, basically, floating across the sky and we could see it kind of moving and undulating and waving and stuff and we were just excited I mean we were literally hooting and hollering like this was the coolest experience to see the northern lights uh, the first time and to see them so close to home uh, and so far south because it's not very common that you see them in Utah it's I mean once maybe once or twice uh, a decade or something like that is so we were really excited that we were seeing this. So I, I set up, I actually set up a, a time lapse. So I wanted to get the kind of the movement of the northern lights dancing across the sky. So I set up a time lapse. And we did that until this, this cloud kind of moved out of frame. And I'll share that time lapse with you here as well. And then once that kind of died down a little bit, that was kind of the, the bulk of the activity. After that, it was probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of that activity. My friend and his, his parents left, 
And I stayed there and I took a couple more show, uh, photos and did some panels and stuff because the Milky Way was out too. So I'll share another uh, photo of that um, panel that I did with me standing in the field. And uh, you can see the, the northern lights on the horizon there. And, um, but it wasn't quite as, I mean, it's just kind of glow on the horizon. It wasn't like actual colors and waves or ribbons like you see in this, in this photo. And... So I was just super excited. Aaron thought it was really cool. None of my kids, actually only one of my kids, willingly got out of the car. I picked up my daughter. I tried picking up my boys and was like, hey, come out and look. But they were just, they were hammered, so they were sleeping. I picked up my daughter and got her out of the car. And I said, Peyton, look, it's the Northern Lights. And she goes, oh, cool, Dad. Bam, and she fell asleep on my shoulder, so I put her back in the car. So they kind of, I tell them, you know, you guys had a chance to see the Northern Lights, and I don't think they think it was such a cool spectacle. Until they saw the photo, and they're like, ah, oh, we really want to go again. After that, we I got home, and I was actually uh, on Facebook uh, sending out notifications, sending out post updates, and saying, hey, Northern Lights are going off. Everybody, you know, if you can, get up to Ogden Valley or a dark sky and look to the north. It's going off like crazy right now. I had a couple other friends that I think tried to go out and weren't able to either capture it or see it. I got home, edited the photos. I think I posted them that night or the next day. Pretty sure it was that night I got home and edited them because I think it was 11 o'clock by the time it was done. Maybe 11.15 I was done. So I got home, hurry and edited a couple and I posted them. So the next day on Sunday, I got a message on Facebook from a guy, just somebody that lives in Ogden, that uh, sent me a message and said, hey, this looks like, uh, he, I think he asked me for the location where I took this, and I said, oh, this is uh, the turnoff at Pineview Reservoir. And he said, uh, he kind of asked some more information about it, and he goes, my dad passed away yesterday, and that was his fishing spot. He went fishing there every day for like the last 20, 30 years or something like that, and he passed away yesterday. And that just brought chills to me that, that has happened the same day that this guy passed away at the same spot that he went fishing for the last two couple decades. And so he wanted, so this guy ended up purchasing uh, some prints for his, uh, for his siblings for their dad's funeral that week. So for me to photograph something like that and have it mean so much to me that I was just so excited about it, but to have it mean something for somebody else, that's one of the big reasons that I photograph um, so m many things, I guess, around Ogden or things that I think that, uh, that would really hit people home. And it was just a really cool experience to have this guy reach out and, and purchase a couple photos and, you know, have this kind of memory of his dad in, his, in this fishing spot. So just a really cool experience, both the Northern Lights, uh, Steve, and, uh, you know, this guy, uh, this guy's dad passing away that day. Now, I'm going to give you a little lesson as much as I can on what Steve is. So Steve stands for, uh, I can't remember, super thermal, I can't, some, they come up with, a, they came up with an acronym, but it's, uh, it's a phenomenon that's not, it's related to the Northern Lights, but it's, it's, uh, it's a bit different. And this is a very recent uh, discovery uh, that several photographers had started noticing in photos. And I'll actually share a link with you in the description below on a documentary that they just made uh, regarding Steve. And it's a really cool, it's a really kind of short documentary, um, but I think you can buy it for like a dollar or two dollars on Vimeo. Or um, I'll share a couple links for you guys to watch it or, or to buy it. But... It's just a really cool thing that they that they found out um, this new phenomenon that's kind of uh, interesting in the night sky. So I had posted this photo. I found out about a Facebook group that's called Alberta or Aurora Chasers, and so I joined the group and shared my photo and said, "Hey, I saw Northern Lights in in uh, in Northern Utah last night," and because everybody up there was just like getting great great results, you know, it was an incredible storm. So I posted and they said, "Oh, wow, that's a that's a really far south for the Northern Lights. And then somebody commented and I think tagged another photographer and said, hey, does this look like Steve to you? And I was like, 
with Steve. So I had to do a little bit of research in, in there and found out that Steve is this like a ribbon, kind of the, what you see there. And it usually one of the aspects of it is it's got these little picket fence, green little picket fence is what they call it, attributes to the photo or to the, uh, to the lights there. And um, so the guy said, yeah, that looks like the typical the typical Steve that we've been seeing. And I think this was maybe a year or so after they really kind of discovered this, this Steve phenomenon. So uh, I found out, found out through that, 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 that I captured Steve. And as far as I know, I think I'm the furthest south on the, further south to capture Steve. I'm, I may be incorrect there, but as far as I know, I, I believe I'm the furthest south to capture the phenomena, Steve. It's just a really cool, uh, really cool thing to to kind of witness and then to to capture. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the story behind the photograph. If you did, give it a like. Give me a subscribe if you uh, enjoy these videos or you want to see more. Until next time, guys. Bye.